All right, good evening and welcome to our side-by-side -side concert. We started this a few years ago as an opportunity to get the eighth graders to have some contact with our high school students. And notice, we kind of got it timed up. Scheduling starts Monday, I know. Um, so we're here with the Strongsville High School Chamber Strings. Our chamber strings are interspersed throughout the ensemble. Uh, Strongsville High School's chamber strings stand up so they know where you are. So there's the chamber strings right there. Uh, these are our top audition string players here in the Strongsville High School Orchestra program. If you look in the back of your program, you'll see a list of all of our ensembles at the high school and all the uh, wonderful, awesome orchestra opportunities students have a, um, the opportunity to be a part of, and Chamber Strings is one of those. So it's with uh, great pleasure tonight that I conduct our opening piece. Um, I think we have a student who's going to tell you all about it. Hello, my name is Raul and I play the violin. Franz Joseph Haydn is known as the father of the symphony due to over 100 symphonies be he composed over his lifetime. Haydn created the framework for the symphonic form. Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven are among the most famous composers from the classical era in general. Classical mu era music was more simple and sounded lighter than the music from the preceding Baroque period. Early symphonies in the classical era, such as this one, feature one simple melody that is supported by the rest of the instruments in the orchestra. Not until Beethoven did the classical symphony start becoming more complex in texture and melodic content. We open tonight's concert with a finale from Haydn's 12th Symphony.
Okay, it works. Hello, my name is Violet and I play the cello. Night Shift is an original work composed by Richard Meyer. We use this song as a teaching piece to learn how to shift. Shifting means we change the position of our left hand on the fingerboard so we can play higher notes on that particular string. Shifting higher on a string can also help us avoid awkward crossings between strings in order to play those same notes, thus making the music easier to play. While you may not notice the technique we use to execute this piece, you are sure to enjoy the rhythms and melodies. Here is Night Shift.
My name is Yasmin Chavez, and I play the viola. We began tonight's concert with a symphony from the early classical period, and now we continue with a piece based on a famous melody from the late classical period. Beethoven is considered to be the composer who bridged the classical and romantic eras in music. Although Beethoven composed nine symphonies compared to Haydn's 104, the quality of his symphonies and other contributions he made to the music field outweigh quantity. Beethoven is credited with expanding the symphony both in length and complexity. Each movement was longer, he changed keys a lot more than his predecessors, and brought back some of the counterpoint from the Baroque period. He also expanded the orchestra in size and instrumentation. Before Beethoven, the tonal center of the orchestra was set in the higher instruments. By writing more melodies for the lower range of the violins, violas, cellos, and woodwinds, it brought a deep, rich sound to the symphony orchestra. This might be why so many of his symphonies sound dark and brooding. Beethoven moved away from the simpler, light melodies of the early classical period to ones that were either very rhythmic in nature, such as the main theme from his famous Fifth Symphony, or very lyrical, as the Ode to Joy from the Ninth Symphony. It is this latter melody that we perform for you this evening. There have been many arrangements of Beethoven's Ode to Joy over the years, and no matter the setting, it always seems to retain its beautiful, lyrical quality. You will hear Beethoven's famous melody flow through all sections of the orchestra in this very lush arrangement by Brian Baumages. Here is a Beethoven lullaby, an air on Ode to Joy.
Hello, my name is Victoria Waldron, and I play the violin. Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov was a famous Russian composer who lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s, during what is known as the Romantic Era in music history. Music from the Romantic Era focused more on drama, telling stories, spirituality, and connecting with nature. Much of today's symphony orchestras perform music from this era. Rimsky-Korsakov's music focused on Russian folk tales. Dance of the Tumblers is from his third opera, The Snow Maiden. The Snow Maiden is as popular a story in Russian culture as Cinderella is here in the United States. The Snow Maiden is a daughter of the goddess of spring and Father Frost, the god of winter. She has a heart made of ice, which will melt if she falls in love. However, if her heart melts, she will die. The daughter wants to live among humans in a nearby village, but her parents don't want her to go in order to protect her. The village has experienced endless winter, and the Tsar knows that the sun god will not allow summer to arrive as long as the snow maiden is alive. Her parents, knowing that she has never loved anyone, allow her to spend time in the village. The Tsar decides to offer a substantial reward to the man who can get her to fall in love with him. The dance of the tumblers is from the scene in the opera where the village people are celebrating what they hope will be the end to the years of winter. A young man does catch the snow maiden's eye, but she sees him flirting with an other girl, so her heart remains hard and cold. Another young man is attracted to her, but she ignores him. After all, he's engaged to marry someone else. However, he does not love the girl he was arranged to marry. He calls off the wedding and tries to win the snow maiden's love. She runs off crying, wishing she could love him. However, over time, she does fall in love with him, and as she professes her love in front of the village, her heart melts and she melts into a lake. The young man is so brokenhearted that he throws himself into the water and dies. Well, this is an opera. You didn't expect a happy ending, did you? <laughs> Please enjoy this one happy scene from the opera, Dance of the Tumblers from the Snow Maiden.
just a quick pause while we switch from eighth grade to high school chamber strings.
Lily Bubb, and I play the cello. The Vitamin String Quartet is a, an, an innovative group of classical musicians who create and perform cutting-edge string renditions of classic and modern rock songs. Fusing virtuoso technique with the hits of contemporary artists, VSQ has sold mil millions of recordings and amassed an incredible following. Their piece, Starlight, is a hard-changing, triumphant take on a modern mainstay originally performed by Muse.
was a tough piece to conduct. Um, so that was the Vitamin String Quartet, really cool, Advent Guard group, no conductor, it's the type of stuff we do. We have lots of opportunities here at Strongsville High School in our orchestra program. It's a pretty big program. We have a lot of uh, places for all students of all um, ability groups and ages to be in. Several of these students were at this concert last year as eighth graders. Why don't you guys stand up if those were you? No, as eighth graders. Here. Freshmen, raise your, there you go. These are freshmen that made this group this year. That's a pretty big deal to come into here and freshmen, give them up a hand, please. That's awesome. All right. Our next piece is a selection that we are actually going to be playing here in a couple weeks at State Orchestra Contest. So Ohio State Orchestra Contest is held here on this stage. We are a hosting site on Friday, February 24th. So all of our orchestras right now are busily preparing three selections to play in front of three judges who'll be sitting back there. And then we go into a sight reading room where we sight read a brand new piece of music in front of another adjudicator. Uh, so one of our contest selections with Sipti Orchestra, we're gonna, or Chamber Strings, we're gonna play right now. Brand new piece, just came out 2022. Japanese composer, she's like really popular right now. Uh, awesome piece, I'm gonna have uh, someone tell you all about this piece. Hello, my name is Sophia and I play the cello. Japanese composer and pianist Yukiko Nishimura composed String of Dolphins earlier, uh, er, recently in 2022. The title String of Dolphins comes from a species of trailing succulents that has cute dolphin-shaped leaves. Collectively, the numerous leaves resemble many dolphins playing in the ocean and was the inspiration for this piece. To express the lightness of this piece, the piece is composed in 6-8 time, which maintains a fun dance-like lilt. A slower section in the middle adds contrast as the orchestra changes from G to D major. This piece is quite challenging to play as it requires quick running eighth notes that are played spiccato or off the string. Getting all the parts to line up is quite challenging. This is our first performance by this composer. Thank you. 
All right, I wasn't sure what our third selection would be at the time the program was made a couple days ago. We're going to play the final selection from St. Paul Suite. This last movement is entitled The Dargison, which means the dragon. Pretty popular piece, actually, written by um, British composer Gustav Holst. And I have someone who's got the reading for that. I gave it to somebody who has Dargison. Wait a minute. It's on there. Yep. All right, Sophia, you want to read somebody? Here we go. I'm Sophia again. <laughs> the fourth movement, called the Dargison, was originally composed from his second suite for band, but rescored for strings and features two prominent folk songs. The Dargison, a fast country dance, and green sleeves. Eventually, the two themes are juxtaposed over the top of one another, creating a three against two feel known as hemiola. Enjoy our performance of the third and of the fourth movement of this popular string orchestra standard. We will feature. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So the write-up included movement three, which actually we're playing in two weeks. But um, anyhow. This is movement four of the St. Paul Suite.
Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Eighth graders, you sounded fantastic. I loved all the musical selections that Miss T and uh, Mr. Tyson worked with you for the past uh, several weeks. You guys were amazing. I'll see you soon at the All City Orchestra Festival. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody.